Hey, what's up everybody? So you've got your website ready, up and running, but what now? Yes, that's probably a question you've asked yourself. And in this video, I'll give you my best tips on what to do after building your website and how to start getting your, your traction running and make sure that you know what's happening. So I'm talking about tracking, I'm talking about little tactics for SEO, for just basically general tips that will help you in your all around strategy and make sure that you're not forgetting anything and can help you guide you towards maybe other videos where you'll go a bit more in depth. I won't tell you how to install Google Analytics. I won't tell you how to run a full SEO campaign. What I'll tell you is how to get started and what to get thinking about and just keep, get the ball rolling basically when your website is built. Tip number one, tracking. Yes, you wanna make sure Google Analytics is installed on your website. What's the point of running a strategy if you can't see its effectiveness and you can't find the bottlenecks or the problems that are causing the effects? If you're watching this in 2023, you most likely just need Google Analytics 4. But if you're watching this in 2022, then you might wanna install Google Analytics and Google Analytics 4. But if you're just learning right now how to install that, then just install GA4, it'll be simpler because Google Analytics 3 is gonna be expired in 2023 anyways. A quick tip, the best way to install this is with GTM, Google Tag Manager. This way all your tags and snippets like Google Analytics, Pinterest, tracking code, pixel, whatever different snippets you've got going on are all organized and they're in the same place. You can also run tests to see if something's not working and it'll tell you if you're missing something or whatnot. Another tool I use for tracking, especially when it gets complicated for clients, is I recommend installing HockeyStack or Clicky. Now HockeyStack is my favorite, so if you don't really want to get too deep into Google Analytics, even though you should install it in any case, but you don't feel like learning too much because there's a pretty big learning curve since there's a lot of different things to look at and not all businesses need all that. Since it's an all-in-one platform, then it's geared mostly towards big businesses, small businesses. You can do whatever you want with Google Analytics. You can, it's, it could be for a million dollar company or for a $5,000 company. So in the end, you've got to make it work for you and you've got to only pull the data that you need. So if you don't want to go through all that hassle, then you can use Hockey Stack. They use cookie-less tracking. They have a very simple way of showing the in-depth metrics, funnel visualization, and goals. So basically, when someone clicks on a certain button, they'll give you smart insights like, for example, is this a goal for your company? And if you click yes, then they'll add it as a goal. Where in Google Analytics, it's, it's a bit more complicated than that, but like you need to know where to go and it's a huge software. So I understand that sometimes it can be overwhelming. So that's why I use this tool sometimes for my clients that are less tech savvy or don't want to get into the, the gist of all that. P.S. I am an affiliate for this tool. I love it and it's very easy to use. So I recommend it. Next up is email marketing. A lot of companies say email marketing is dead. It is not dead. I can assure you that. So first step for email marketing is you want to make sure you have a form on your site that's asking a subscriber to subscribe or a user to subscribe. You'll create a small campaign within something like MailChimp, MailerLite, Active Campaign, Get Response, any of these tools. And at that point, what you do is you simply create the functions that you need. Don't go overboard. You could do a lot with email marketing. It's an entire job. Someone could spend their day doing that. Maybe not the whole day, because obviously at some point there's a lot of automated things, but if you want to know more about email marketing, what it is and how to get started, what types of platforms you'll need and stuff like that, recommendations, check out this video where I talk about specifically that email marketing for digital marketers. And it's part of my digital marketing mini series where I cover all the aspects of digital marketing and what types of careers you could probably get into and stuff like that. It's all related to the T-shaped marketer, which is basically a skill set that goes horizontally. So we've got email marketing, uh, SEO, web design, all that. And then you start diving into one specialization to become more, more specialized and charge more. So back to the email marketing. You'll need to decide what you want to create either a newsletter, which means you'll need to create some content, small pieces of content, which is called also micro content, or maybe you'll need to start publishing some blog posts and then you'll send them a newsletter or a, a reminder, hey, check out the last four blog posts that we posted this month. And some people really want to hear about that. They wanna know what the news is in this industry. They wanna get micro content, which is maybe helpful tips every now and then or every day or every week. And people will sign up for that on your website. Now this is part of a larger campaign that you could later on create, which would be a nurturing campaign. I won't dive too much into that because we could be here for a long time. So when creating micro content, it could be just things like useful tips, or info about the niche that you're in. You could create a micro series, which is something similar to what I'm doing right now with my digital marketing mini series. 
playlist up here. And like I said, it can also be a monthly reminder to check out your blog posts or your content on your website or even your products. But don't go too much into products as long as they haven't gotten some value from you first. You don't want to ask someone to date you before you've even talked to them or engaged some small conversation with them. That is an analogy, by the way. <laughs> now, at some point, you also want to announce promos, which are running discounts, offering discount codes on your website. You can even capture emails with an, a discount code, which is, for example, uh, get 10% off your first purchase. And then when they submit, then that's when they'll start receiving your, your promotions or your, your newsletter or whatnot. You can announce giveaways, send out a cool survey or a poll. And most of these things you can create with the email marketing software that you'll use. So make sure you check what features they've got before you purchase them. And I really like GetResponse and MailerLite, especially MailerLite if you have a business account, like a business email account, like something at domain.com, then you can use it for free. They have a very nice plan for free. Now one very important email automation is that you can create an abandoned cart email and that will entice people that have already added things to their basket to get a reminder and then they'll be reminded that they forgot something or maybe even you can add a percentage off or a discount at that point. Don't make the email come too quick. About 10 hours should be good, but it depends on your industry. Obviously, some products are time sensitive. Okay, next tip is create promotional offers. Now we often think of creating or running ads and email marketing campaigns like the previous tip, but before you do all that, you might wanna create your promos first. And that would be based on your cost of goods or the time it takes you to build a product or offer. Then you'll calculate your profit margin and see how much expenses go into all that. And at that point, you'll be able to assess how much ad spend you can spend and also see how profitable you'll be. Quick tip, use Notion to create a database with your offer. So that way you can easily compare them, tweak them, and you can keep them for later use. If you're following my Notion workspace build for digital marketers series, and you've probably seen or downloaded the template for pricing proposals. The workspace is fully designed for digital marketers and is spending all the time. It's not ready yet, it's not finished, because I'm always adding it as I'm doing the next videos. But uh, at some point, I might just put in the whole workspace, which is my workspace that I currently use, and just template it out towards uh, the, the videos. But I'm not sure how to do that yet because uh, I have a lot of data in it, so I have to clean it out, user-friendly for, for anybody, and explain how to use it and whatnot. So might take a bit of time, but at this point, I'm just creating video by video so you can follow, create it, and download whatever's been created already. You should create about three different types of offers. One of them with a percentage-based offer, one of them with two for one, maybe a three by three get one. Set up different types of pricing plans. That way you'll have a, a rough idea of what your market accepts the most. All right, next step on the list is plan out your content distribution. Now you should create a content plan and know where you'll be distributing it. You'll pick the most important channels, but don't pick too many. Now, if you're running a blog, definitely consider a newsletter. If you're selling physical products, plan out your flyers, product creative images for ads, for example, and promotional banners. If you have a subscription-based business, you might want to look into trial offers and maybe even discounts for customers that pay annually. You've probably seen this before, I'm sure. And the reason you've seen this is because it's a very popular tactic. People love free trials and people love free things in general, because once you've tasted, touched, experienced, or felt the product, then you'll know what it is and you'll have broken the ice between you and the brand, well, between the customer and the brand. Now, if at some point they feel like they need that same experience that they've tested with your trial, or maybe they need something similar, then you'll be top of mind and you'll be an option for them to choose from because they would have discovered you. Now, this concept is called discoverability and it's a very powerful concept indeed. Now, annual discounts are really good because they increase your cash flow, which gives you more purchasing power and you can invest more of your money to grow your business. Even though you would sell the plan for a cheaper price per month than you would if they would only pay month per month, well, when the user picks the annual pricing, they'll get the amount right away. So they'll get, the company will get all the amount of the money. So they can use that to make investments in other things. And so they can use that money to, to double it up or to whatever, to, to increase their marketing or whatever they want to do with it to invest. And then that money they lost by offering that discount, that annual discount, well, they'll have made it back. Okay, now my last tidbit is about marketing spend. Do not be afraid to spend in marketing. A lot of people are reluctant and think that, oh, I might waste my money. A lot of businesses think like that. I've seen that over the years. People think like that all the time. You'll always have someone in the company saying, no, we shouldn't be spending on marketing. It doesn't work like that. Or maybe we'll just do mouth to mouth and yeah, people will ear to mouth and people will hear about us and stuff like that. But you got to spend in marketing. Listen, according to research from the U.S. Small Business Administration, the average marketing budget 
is between $2,500 and $12,000 per month. And that's research done in 2021. And they also say that you should spend about 7 to 8% of your gross revenue in marketing. That's if you're doing less than $5 million. But obviously, if you're starting a new website, probably making less than $5 million, unless you've been already established outside of online, of course. I'll leave that resource down there in the link if you want to check it out more in details. And remember the old saying, you got to spend money to make money. I'll leave you guys with that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon. Take care.